Yeah. Um, uh, it's my great pleasure to give this lecture. Uh, the title that I was given is Duality in Many Body Physics. I will uh, treat many body physics in a broader sense. Uh, the condensed matter physics uh, uh, topics, uh, would be, which usually would be called statistical physics. Uh, I realized that this is the fourth um, weeks of uh, TASI. I did lecture in TASI in um, about, uh, somehow it disappeared in about um, uh, about five years ago. I think 2016. I remember still that the fourth week is the uh, most difficult week for the students. So um, I try to cover, uh, um, still I would like to cover some topics that I think would be useful for um, students uh, for general education at least. So um, uh, I'm going to start um, by talking about duality in um, two dimension in this lecture. And if there is time, uh, we will start talking about particle vortex duality in uh, three dimensional um, uh, field theory. So uh, let's first uh, um, settle on the terminology. So when we say duality, it means that there are two theory, let's call that theory A, um, is equivalent to theory B. Though these two theories look different in their formulation. And when we call uh, equal to each other, in fact, uh, this equal sign uh, have two different meanings uh, that uh, we need to distinguish. And we will see these um, uh, two different ways that dualities are um, realized. One, uh, uh, one possible meaning of this uh, equal sign is uh, that they, they, this equal sign that exact duality that valids at any energy scale. So theory A in the case of exact duality is just theory B, any quantity that we compute in theory A independent of the energy scales could be mapped to some quantity. We, we lost you for a little bit, I think. Uh, 20, 20 seconds. Computer. Okay, so uh, uh, um, here I want to say that there are two type of duality. I guess let's try to turn all of our video off and see if that helps. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, I think we lost uh, uh, the speaker. <laughs> um, okay. give, give him a minute to reconnect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I tried to move to another place. Let me turn off my video. Um, can you hear? Uh, we can hear you a bit. Uh, you cut out the, the last bit there. You hear me? No? Oh, maybe I tried to move somewhere else. Um, okay. Is it now okay? Or yeah, we now, right now, now we can hear you, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sitting in my stair on a set of stairs. So. 
<laughs> I just don't. <laughs> This right. okay, talk, so drink stock was completely fine somehow. It was completely fine. Now is it fine? Now it's good. Now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did, okay. Are you comfortable though in your stance? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the next uh, uh, 75 minutes. <laughs> uh, let's try to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, let me share the screen again. Sure. Okay, somehow I thought we can see that. Yeah. Okay now. Yeah. So um I was saying that there are two types of dualities. One type of duality is exact duality that is valid at any energy scale. The other one, another type of duality is IR dualities. So in IR duality, what we mean is that this theory A and theory B, they are defined differently and they have different um, dynamics in the UV, but they all flow to the same fixed point in the IR. Okay, and we will see example of this duality in, um, uh, in three dimensions. By the way, if there are any questions during my uh, lecture, please interrupt me at any time. Okay, so now- Sorry, um, I, I have a question actually. So when, when you say like equals exacted all energies- To uh, mm -hmm. uh, remind you some materials that, yeah. Naomi, can can you keep going? Can your question? Sure. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't sure if the the internet connection. Um, when you say exact at all energy scales, what exactly do you mm -hmm. mean is equal there? Like, do you mean computing some observables or, like? Yeah. In, yeah. Any uh, correlation function. In, for example, two point function of some operator would be equal to two point function of another set of operators B. Okay. Of the, uh, the partition function of the theory in A is equal to partition function of theory in B. Anything one can compute would be, can map into uh, a quantity in B. Yeah. That is the best type of duality. Um, but sometimes we have to settle with uh, less, um, less, um, um, uh, duality, which is the duality of the infrared limit. Okay, so uh, this may be abstract, but I'm going to make it concrete by reminding you of something that maybe you have seen in the course of uh, statistical mechanics. So the two-dimensional rising model. So the Ising model is the um, simplest example of a, a theory that of a system that uh, exhibit phase transition, uh, and so that and it's also exactly solvable. That's why it's usually treated in a, a course of statistical mechanics. So um, the type of duality that uh, I'm going to describe sometimes go. Grammars. One year duality. I'm not sure about the spelling, but it's grammars one year duality. Is what one can look for if one uh, needs to find information about this. Okay, what is the Ising model? So, um, the model, so this is the a classical model classical statistical mechanical model. We have spins located in uh, on certain site in two dimensional plane. So here I'm drawing a model defined on a square lattice, but one can define it on any 
of the lattice for example triangular lattice and on which uh, on each side we assume that there is a spin that can point either up or down so for example we can define such configuration and the uh, hamiltonian is written as minus j sum over all pairs of sites i and j times s i s j okay i and j is these are the sites and the spins have values that can be either plus or minus one And in the start mech, what we are interested in is the partition function. Which is a Gibbs ensemble, sum over the Gibbs ensemble. That is sum over all the sets of possible value of any of each i and j. So here is my, this would be i and this would be j. And the sum of, um, in H is taken over all pairs of neighboring spin I and J. Some the partition function is sum over all configurations S I and J, that is each of the spin runs plus and minus one, E to minus beta H and H is can be thought of as a function of all the spin. Okay. Okay, so what we know, um, or what, what do we expect from the physical um, consideration? So beta, beta is one over temperature. When the temperature is high, uh, or beta is low, we expect that the spin will be randomized. That is the expectation value of spin in the Gibbs ensemble will be equal to zero. That is sometimes called the paramagnetic phase. Uh, for us, um, uh, it is a symmetry restore phase. That's, uh, we have a symmetry here. The symmetry is a Z2 symmetry. Z2 symmetry flip the sign of all spin. X, so X I minus X, X, uh, X I. And since the Hamiltonian in both products of two spin, um, the Hamiltonian doesn't change under Z2. In the high temperature regime, all the spin are randomized. Average value of spin is zero. It's a symmetry restore phase. What do you mean by high temperature? Uh, the only parameter of the dimension of energy here is J. So high temperature means you need T much larger than J. When T is much smaller than J, it's a low temperature phase. We expect that the expectation value of my spin will be non-zero. And this is the ferromagnetic phase. Our symmetry Z2 is broken by the wear of the spin. So here it's the situation is just very familiar uh, in field theory. It's like a double wire potential. Field theory would show the same uh, behavior. Okay, so now I'm going to show you that there is a duality in the Ising model that maps the Ising model to itself. So in order to derive this duality, 
we have to talk about um, two expansion called the low temperature and high temperature expansion. Expansion here, some series expansion for Z for the partition function. So let's start with the low temperature expansion. So in low temperature, we expect that our spin will do something like this. Low temperature, it's favorable to keep the Hamiltonian as low as um, possible. Zero temperature, the system is in the ground state. That means all the spins are pointing in the same direction. So we start with the situation where all the spin in this are uh, pointing in the same direction. If we have finite temperature, sometimes we have a spin that's flip sign. So sometimes we can um, find a few spins that flip sign. So most of our spins are spin up, but very few of them will be spin down. And then in this case, what we do is that we, let's imagine that we draw a border between spin up and spin down. So these are the, so these are the side. On each side, there is a spin. And we draw a line separating all the spin up um, uh, from spin down. Okay, so if we see zoom out, but the situation that we have will be somewhat like this. We have most of the most of our sample will have one sign of spin, but there are a few domains that will be created that have spin of uh, opposite sign. So here. If all spins are here are plus, then inside this little domain, we have spin minus. And this um, at low temperature occupies only, only a, a small fraction of the volume of the area of the system. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Okay, so now the Hamiltonian is some minus j sum over i and j of si times sj. That si times sj is either plus one if i and j belong to the same domain and will be minus one if one is inside this little domain and the other spin is outside that domain. So if they are uh, across i and j uh, across the domain noir, located across the domain noir. So from this consideration, it's clear that the value of the Hamiltonian, the, 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 the value of the energy of this configuration, it's going to be, oh, sorry, this was minus plus j, this is minus j, right? Um, sorry, even the sign I wrote was wrong. This one should be minus j, this should be plus j. And so if I have two spins that are have the same sign, its energy is minus j, uh, making it different sign costs me an energy 2j. And so the Hamiltonian is 2j. You can see that it's 2j time the number of these pairs, which is, you can check ge geometrically, it is the length of the curve. Is it okay? Yeah. The length of the curve that separate, um, separate the, uh, 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 the region of spin up with the region of spin down. By C here, I mean the union of all these uh, of all these uh, um, 
of all these domains. Let me ask if there is any question so far. Yes. Okay, so if there is no question, uh, let's try to figure out what is the uh, partition function of our system now. So the partition function is a sum. You can think about the partition function. It's a sum over all possible configuration of this C. The C is the union of closed curve to mean wall. And E minus two beta J uh, times the length of the C. So in high, in the low temperature regimes, we can express the partition function as sum over all the closed curve, closed domain wall um, border. So curves here means a zigzag line uh, that goes in between the uh, spin. Like so this, far, this is true for all temperatures, right? This is low temperature expansion. Low temperature expansion means that in, when we write these things out, um, the, um, uh, the first, uh, um, the, the contribution where the C have larger and larger lengths more and more suppressed. So far, you haven't used the fact that it's low temperature. So far, it is true for all temperatures, right? So far, it's uh, true for all temperature. Uh, but yes, okay. um, the, um, the the question is whether these ones converge. Um, but I'm not going actually going to address this question. I'm just going to use this formula for all temperature. OK, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so, so basically, you draw any curve, any things that separate uh, the spins. Uh, into domains of plus and domain of minus spins, and then sum over uh, all this configuration with the weight, even by exponent of the of the length. Okay, so in this way, uh, one have one type of uh, expansion, which is useful at low temperature. Okay, so now. Um, mm, and it has, has been actually been used uh, for numerical uh, calculations of the partition function before people know how to use, how to uh, solve exactly the, um, the, 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 the Ising model. Uh, this has been used as a series expansion for the partition function. Sorry, can I ask a quick question? Uh, sure. about the partition function that you wrote down. Um, yeah. Can you just say again, so the C in the sum is now not over just the, the the domain wall boundaries, right? It's over all the closed curves. On the so left. all the yeah, the domain wall boundaries. Uh, I, I call this domain wall boundary closed curve. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so the C there is only over the, the the boundaries of the domain walls. The yeah, but I okay. want to emphasize that this boundary can uh, can be of um, we have to sum over all possible configurations of this um, of this boundary okay yeah these are these six up that separate um, um, spin up from spin down okay okay so this is one uh, expansion now the second expansion is the high temperature expansion and It's a bit more uh, non trivial, but still quite easy to construct. So let me look at one for uh, one uh, term in the uh, um, so the partition function can be well, one, one term in the partition function can be is some. Let me, let me just write down this. This is not the partition function, but just one term in the partition function is sum is a product over all i and j, e minus beta s i and s j. Okay. If I look at this e to minus beta j s i s j for a given uh, 
a and j pair, um, I see that it can has two possible values. In order for to simplify the notation, let me call beta j k will be equal to k. It is e to minus k if s i s j is equal to one and e plus k if s i sorry this has to be plus because um, the Hamiltonian has a minus sign. Okay, sorry, making some mistake. Uh, when S I S J is equal to one, I have plus e, e to plus K and S I J minus one, E to minus K. So this means I can rewrite this exponent as cosine, hyperbolic cosine of K plus S I times S J, a hyperbolic sine of K. That's my e to the beta k times s i s j, just uh, properties of the uh, Ising spin, which can be only plus one or minus one. So then I now know that this my z is a sum over all possible configuration of s i. That is s i equal plus minus one. And in each term in this sum is a product over different ij, the cosine, hyperbolic cosine of k plus s i s j, hyperbolic sine of k. Okay, so you see here that this becomes useful in high temperature. But high temperature, high temperature means small beta. So when t goes to infinity, k goes to zero. So imagine that so k is much less than one, then this sign, this becomes small. In high temperature. So we will treat this as something small and expand our partition function in series over hyperbolic sine of k. Now, if we now look at this um, uh, product, right, the first term in the product would be when all the uh, every um, factor contribute cosine of k. So we have as a baseline um, uh, contribution, everything is cosine of k. It's actually convenient to factor out this cosine of k out. So it's cosine of k is times the number of link. And then the whole thing inside is sum over si product over i and j, one plus sine i s i s a tangent of k. The non-trivial behavior of the Ising model is not due to this cosine of k to some power because that one is just some analytic function of k. Uh, the non-trivial behavior at the um, critical point, the trace and phase transition is given by that, by this factor. Okay, so now we are going to see what the structure of this factor looks like. We think about this lattice again. Now, if I have uh, in this uh, in this product, if all the ones are multiplied to each other, I'm not going to uh, draw anything in this line. If I have a um, in this when I expand this uh, products, I will get product of some of this factor S I S J times tangent of k. So whenever such a, a factor appears, 
in my expansion, I'm going to draw a line like this, which represents um, each of these lines represents S I S J time tangent hyperbolic of K. So each term in this uh, expansion is going to be co to, to correspond to some, some graph, some diagram, for example, like this. The lines that uh, connect two neighboring, a line connecting two neighboring points correspond to a factor, this factor. And if two neighboring points do not, are not connected to each other, that means there I would have a one. The product over i and j is product over all uh, neighboring pairs. So this uh, neighboring pair uh, can either be connected by a line or not. When I expand this product, I have either one or S I S J times the tangent of k. Okay. Any question so far? Now, if I uh, think in the next step, what I have to do in the next step, I have to do this sum, sum over S I J, where I S I runs value of plus or minus one. I see right away that the contribution that survive will be will have to contain only closed curve, right? For example, here, if I have, um, if I if I'm just zoom in in this part of the diagram, I have say S one times S two tangent of k, but then I have to sum over S one running from minus one to one and summing from S two running from minus one to one. And each of these sum give me already zero. Similarly, uh, in this, this part of the diagram, this part, this part will be zero because uh, I have uh, vertices that, um, that is a single spin. I have here basically S1, S2 square, S3, sum over S1 and S3 give me zero. That means that it, when I expand the product, I can throw away all the graphs that does not contain, that contains some curve, some, 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 some curves that are not closed. So this is an important uh, remark. I, I want to ask if you have any question about this before going further. Okay, so hopefully this is clear. Then I have then the partition function. I'm going to um, ignore all the um, trivial refactor, uh, which can be kept, um, but it will make the formulas more cumbersome. So here, what I have is that Z is going to be what it's going to be, it's going to be uh, sum again over all against all the configuration with a closed curve, C, C tilde. And here I have each of these. Give me a contribution that is, you can see it's proportional to tangent hyperbolic of k to the power of the length of this curve C tilde. We call ourselves k is equal to beta j. So this is the so-called high temperature expansion. So we have two different expansion for the uh, Ising model. One expansion is over all domain walls, 
which are closed curves, separating the spins, e to minus two beta, two beta to the two k to the power of length of curve c, and the other um, is a sum over all possible line connecting the spin and make a closed curve or unions of closed curve. Uh, high temperature expansion. So this is low T. Okay, so now if we look at these, we see that this high temperature and low temperature expansion uh, looks exactly the same. Uh, so the uh, we have a map between the low temperature um, regimes and high temperature regime. Namely, um, Ising model at one value of beta uh, or one value of K equal beta J is, has the same partition function up to some uh, not some trigger factor as the Ising model at temperature inverse temperature with beta tilde or uh, k fact k uh, variable k tilde called beta tilde j if e to minus two k is equal function is hyperbolic of k tilde. So that is the map of one Ising model to another Ising model. One Ising model with temperature given by K, dimension less temperature given by inverse temperature given by K in the other model with dimension less uh, temperature given by K tilde. Sorry, can I, I think I'm still a little confused um, about yeah. a point from earlier. So. It seems like, but I, I guess I'm wrong, that both of the ways that you wrote down the partition function, mm -hmm. although they're like more suited clearly to either the low temperature limit or the high temperature limit, that mm -hmm. in fact, like both of them do describe the same thing. Like I, I don't really see why when you wrote down the partition function in the low temperature limit, why mm -hmm. you couldn't have done the same thing in the high temperature limit. Obviously it would be like, way messier and if you expanded it it you know wouldn't converge but it, it seems like they're both exact so i'm a little confused about what's going on when you're comparing them now yeah when comparing them now um uh, uh, assuming that uh, this expansion makes sense for all temperature so it, i actually agree with you uh, this name high temperature and low temperature expansion some some uh, i think have uh, historical um, um they, they 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 are they are settled um they are named so because they were used historically to compute uh, the partition fun function numer well uh, quasi analytically uh, mm -hmm. numerically at um, in the respective regimes um here i'm going to just close my eyes on the questions of uh, uh, convergence and just use mm -hmm. them uh, as uh, exact uh, uh, partition function for the Ising model. Uh, so the, the partition function of the Ising model is, it, it's the same, so it's the same partition function, but now uh, we know that they are equal to each other. And I'm writing this as two different, um, in two different way. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, what I'm, um, I'm saying here is that um, an Ising model uh, with a temperature inverse temperature B, according to um, uh, the, um, the the argument that we have here, we can say that the partition function uh, of an Ising model with, uh, uh, with with inverse temperature B is equal to the partition function of the Ising model at temperature B tilde if uh, K and K tilde are related in this way, uh, and we can uh, we can we, we, we can claim that because if we use the high temperature expansion in once uh, on one for one temperature and 
low temperature, well, low temperature expansion in one case and in one theory, in one temperature and high temperature expansion in another temperature, uh, we get exactly the same series. I see. So it, so it is true that the two partition functions you've written down are equal, but because they're more suited to these different regimes, you can clearly see that there's a temperature at which, wait. Yeah, yeah, so here I'm writing down some, I'm claiming here that this partition function z of beta mm -hmm. right, is equal to one plus c1 sub tangent of k, c2 tangent of k squared plus etc. But it at the same time is equal to one plus some c1 tilde e2 minus 2k c to tilde e minus 2k square, et cetera. Okay, so the statement here is that if I uh, know how to sum this, make the, take this sum exactly, uh, I get these two, two uh, I get the same function, mm -hmm. just expanded in two different series. Mm -hmm. This C1 and C2s are the same, right? No, C1, C1, C1 and C2. C1 tilde, sorry, C1 and C1 tilde. No, they C2. are different. Um, um, in the uh, in the um, in in this case it's the same yeah in in the uh, I, I'm going to uh, so let let's assume they are the same okay. for a moment yeah uh, I'm going to there's some subtlety I'm going to go to later on so C one C two are the same so let me erase this um, these they are the same now I want a very basic question sorry. Uh, that yeah. this beta tilde, this here, this beta tilde, is it beta inverse or you have to get it solved from this equation? I have to get it from this equation. Ah, so they okay. are not. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's, 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 uh, let's um, think about K and K tilde as just beta and beta tilde. Let's assume you can set J equal to one to, uh, to think about K and K tilde as, uh, uh, as um, as the same uh, as as inverse temperature. So here you see, if k goes to zero, yeah, k tilde have to go to infinity because the tangent function goes to zero, uh, go to one when its argument, uh, exactly. yeah, go to uh, zero. And then if k goes to infinity, exponent goes to zero, k tilde goes to zero. But they are not, um, as you see from this equation, they are not, uh, they are not uh, just in uh, inverse. inverse. And they are not just inverse. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, so this yeah, is something. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't get why C and C tilde are the same. It seemed to me that they just look the same because it's a square lattice. But aren't you working with a dual lattice in one case? Yeah, that's what okay, I, I, I want to um, say. If I, we are, uh, if we are working in the um, with the say with the um, Ising model, uh, let's consider a, a triangular lattice. So if we consider uh, Ising model with the triangular lattice like this, okay, then C is the domain in um, that um, um, consists of line separating spin up and spin down. Um, and so it has to have uh, the form of line like this. You can you can convince yourself that this is not a curve that are uh, that you would get by connecting the the spins uh, uh, from the triangular lattice. You get lines which has a different uh, shape. And so, uh, what does it mean is that the uh, this duality maps curve on the so it maps Ising model on triangular lattice to an Ising model on hexagonal lattice, and vice versa. So let me just say a triangular lattice Ising model under this Kramer's uh, uh, Vanier duality mapped to a hexagonal lattice. On the um, uh, square lattice, we are lucky because the dual lattice and the 
uh, original lattice are the same. So the Ising model in on a square lattice has self-duality, mapped to itself. Doesn't have to be so. Could I ask a question um, yeah, sure. about the, the, the quality of these partition functions? One thing you haven't taken into account, as far as I can tell, is that in the low temperature phase, there's a unique, there are two ground states because you have Z2 symmetry breaking. But mm -hmm. in the high temperature phase, there's a unique, there's a unique uh, ground state. And I would think that would be reflected in like a prefactor of the partition function. But may maybe you're not taking that into account. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is something um, I'm not, uh, haven't. I uh, have to be careful about, um, mm, I'm not sure if uh, if this factor would remain, uh, maybe, maybe it's something one can think about. Yeah, sure. as, a, as a homework. Thanks. Uh, yeah, what happened to that factor of two? There are various other factors here, like cosine of this cosine. So, this two here, there is certain cosine of uh, this uh, K factor, etc. that I also ignore. So, um, but uh, um, if one proceed without thinking um, about these issues, we find that the Ising model on a square lattice A map to itself, uh, self dual. Another thing that you can check is that when you map k to k tilde using the formula that we have just written down, we can do this duality again, get k double tilde. And one uh, exercise is to check that k double tilde is equal to k. So this, this map. Um, uh, when you do, do this uh, duality map twice, you get back the same Ising model with the same temperature. What else uh, I want to say here? Uh, the self dual point. Determined by the solution to these equations. Um, correspond to the critical point, phase transition point, um, phase transition temperature of the Ising model. And uh, this, um, the duality is actually the easiest way to find out the value of the uh, critical temperature of the Ising model. Okay. Sorry, why should the self dual point be the point where the phase transition happens? Why that should be, it's a special point. Um, uh, it's um, when these two series, uh, so the, 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 the the logarithm, so what, what happened is the following. The logarithm of the partition function um, is the, is, um, has a singularity, has a singularity uh, at beta equal beta C. And that is um, uh, infinitely differentiable uh, at any other point. So only at the critical point, the critical point is a, is a special point where this function has a singularity. Now, uh, if uh, this beta C map to a beta C tilde, then the partition function should also have a singularity at the point beta tilde. But we know that there is only one point where the logarithm of uh, Z is singular. That means that beta C is equal to beta C tilde. Okay, so this, yeah, thanks. This assumption we cannot prove that it is a phase transition temperature, but if we know that there is only one uh, second order phase transition, then that, that, that's it. That, that, uh, uh, that's the self dual point. Okay, so um, 
another curious thing that um, if um, I, I recommend uh, this uh, exercise because it's non-trivial. I recommend the exercise of determining um, critical temperature for the Ising model. on triangular lattice. And you may ask, uh, uh, shouldn't, uh, should the um, duality here be useless? I've just uh, said that duality map um, Ising model on a triangular lattice to an Ising model on a hexagonal lattice, which is very different cannot claim self-duality. So how one can actually find the Ising model of the phase transition, the, the temperature of the phase transition by duality. So let me give you a hint. I have a Ising model on the triangular lattice like this. Oh, I'm sorry, on a hexagonal lattice. Like this one. all the spins are on this dot, it's possible to integrate out half of the spin and reduce the problem to a Ising model on a triangular lattice. So that is uh, something that, that is quite non-trivial. can integrate out one half of the spin to get the Ising model on triangular lattice. And combining duality and this fact, um, we have a self duality between the Ising model on a tri triangular lattice and Ising model on the triangular lattice. Okay. So that's uh, a, a very um, interesting um, applications of duality. Okay, so now let's think about the map uh, between correlation function. So uh, I um, suppose I want to compute SISJ correlation function in the Ising model at some temperature. Um, what this at some temperature beta? What is it in the dual theory? What does it map to in the dual theory at temperature beta tilde? To answer this question, it's easier to think about this in the uh, in the high high temperature expansion. Remember that in the high temperature expansion, we take when we compute the partition function, we take a sum over all possible spin configuration, and we have here product over neighboring spin, something like one plus cotan hyperbolic tangents of K times SISJ. Now, if we want to compute a um, uh, correlation function between two spin, we have to insert this uh, external spin into the sum. So the expectation value now we are not going to compute the uh, pure partition function, but something that uh, is related to the expectation value of product of two spins, I spin at side A, spin at side B, and then at 
in A is B, and then it's one over Z. That would be the expectation value. Now let's look at this. We have one spin here, one spin A and one spin at B. And then this expanding this uh, product give us one kind of light, which can be this line or it can be this, it can be something like this. The line can start or end with S. And what when you um, think about this, it's clear that the presence of this SASP will make a contribution that have the form of line that connect SI, SA and SB. In fact, you can convince yourself that the connected part of this uh, correlation function is just some over all lines connecting all the C connecting A and B and the uh, what is here is tangent of K to the power of the length of that is line C. Okay. So this is on one side of the duality. Now we want to create, we have, we want to uh, have exactly the same sum. So what do we want? What do we want? We want to have exactly the same sum over C tilde. So of E to minus beta, K tilde and the power L C. L is the line uh, that connect two point A and, and B in the um, in the low temperature expansion. And now you have a we have a, a problem. Uh, the low temperature expansion uh, usually, well, previously we thought of lower energy expansion as a picture of this kind of domain minus spin everywhere is plus this minus spin form domain. And we take sum over all these domains. Here you want to insert into uh, the partition function a line that connect two points. And it doesn't make any sense to think about this as a domain wall between the plus spin and minus spin. Uh, it's not a closed curve. Okay, so how we can um, then create a, make an object in, um, in the low temperature expansion that look like this. Uh, is the question clear? The puzzle? Yeah. Somehow you have been able, we have been able to map the partition function uh, from of the low and tem high low temperature regime to a uh, partition function of a dual theory in a high temperature regime. But here we want to map not just partition function but some correlation function. And at this moment we have a, a, a little problem. And to solve this little problem, we have to. Um, to do the following things. We have to imagine that we gauge the Ising model. What does it mean that we gauge the Ising model? So the Ising model has the Hamiltonian that is minus J sum over I and J S I S J. Gauging the Ising model means that we have a line connecting I and J. We associate a line with oh, each of these sides with a spin and introduce some external parameter, which I call UIJ. UIJ here is some kind of a gauge field that lives on links, but this UIJ can again 
um, have um, values in um, in the Z2 group, either plus one or minus one. So now the Hamiltonian, of course, is now a function of not only um, beta and j, but it's a function of u i j as well. It's a functional of the uh, of the u. We can think about u as some external uh, gauge field, but in our case, it's a Z2 gauge field uh, that we can uh, we can turn on and couple our spin to. Okay. Uh, any question? So far. Sorry. So it's is is u i j one if i and j are the same and minus one if they're different or something? Or no, i or and j is, anything. i and j's are always different indices, but they are neighboring indices. Sorry, I, I'm just wondering what the rule is for for what u i j is, or or do you get to pick it when you specify how you gauge the Ising model? Okay, so it's like a gauge field, but it's uh, in our case, I'm not making this gauge field dynamical. It's just some uh, fixed configuration that I choose myself. Okay, so I have a lattice and I just go and specify the value of U on each of these links. Got it, okay. Yeah, so there are E to the uh, two to the power of two N way of to end configuration of U and the uh, Hamiltonian depends on these configurations of U. Got it. But it doesn't, uh, as you see, it doesn't, uh, there is a gauge invariance that um, uh, similar to the gauge invariance in, uh, in, in, in gauge theory, namely we can change the, um, uh, change the sign, make a gauge, a gauge transformation that multiplies SZ by some ZI times SZ. ZI is again equal to either plus or minus one and UIJ go to ZIGJ UIJ. The Hamiltonian will be, will remain the same. So the, our, uh, this is really a, a gauge symmetry, uh, but the discrete gauge symmetry, um, local. At each point, we get to choose the, the 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 parameter of the gauge transformation, but it's the transformation of the matter field S completely compensates is completely compensated by the gauge transformation of the gauge field, which is U. So this gauge transformation uh, means that this Hamiltonian, like in the um, in the usual gauge theory, is so maybe this analogy is uh, is required. U is analogous to a mu in the um, in the um, say u one gauge field, and s uh, is uh, uh, similar to scalar field phi, complex scalar field in in usual gauge theory. So that means uh, this gauge transformation, this gauge invariance means that H depends not on U, but only on some, something like F mu nu, the uh, field, the, 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 not the potential, but the field strength. And the equivalence of F mu nu, uh, F mu nu here is the plaquette. That is, we have product of u at four neighboring um, um, the, the 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 u that lives on uh, the side of an elementary square, j k u k l u l i. So this plaquette uh, clearly will map to itself under um, gauge transformation because uh, each um, Z that appear in the transformation of U cancel each other. Z squared is always equal to zero. Right. And so the, um, the, um, the, um, uh, um, this plaquette is the equivalence of the, the F mu. 
discrete version of f mini. So any question so far? So a plaquette can be either uh, one plus one. If the plaquette is plus one, that corresponds to basically a, um, a zero catch field. Right? So like if the plaquette is equal to one everywhere, that means that our gauge field is a pure gauge. Uh, the non-trivial plaquette is when the product of this U is minus one. So there is only one value, non-trivial value of the gauge field in the plaquette, which is minus one. Any question so far? Can you explain this point more? Why is the plus one pure gauge? Okay, so if I uh, have my original uh, original Ising model, so the uh, original Ising model, H equal minus J sum over IJ, SIHJ, that corresponds to all UIJ is equal, everywhere is equal to plus one. So let me call that the um, just a zero um, background field. I, I, I do not turn on any few uh, external background gauge field when I do this. Right. Now I can generate non-zero value of uij by simply doing a gauge transformation. I can do a gauge transformation and make it into minus sij j sum uij. But uij now is equal zi zj. So the gauge transformation that I do was this gauge transformation. Of course, these are just reparameterization of my spin, and so the partition function remains the same. And the partition remains the same. That means that my even the partition, even my gauge field is now non-zero. Um, the part, nothing happened. I didn't change the, uh, the, the theory at all. So that corresponds to a pure gauge. U uh, linking I and J is just the product of two factors Z, I, Z, J that lies on this 2M. But then you can check right away that this bracket is equal to one because it's the plaquette is equal to zi square, zj square, etc. Uh, z square is equal to one. So when I do a gauge transformation, the plaquette doesn't change. So if I have a configuration that has um, uh, um, all the plaquettes are equal to one, um, ignoring some topological issues, I can say that my field is a pure gauge and that the physics remains the same. So the only thing that can change my uh, partition function is when there are uh, there are plaquettes that are equal to minus one in my gauge configuration. Any question? It, it, did I explain? Did I answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. That's clear. Yeah. Okay. So let's now um, try to see what happens if I turn on. A simple, the simplest possible non-trivial gauge configuration in which uh, this is my draw my lattice. I turn on one plaquette with a minus sign here, and another minus plaquette say somewhere here. Okay, so so um, so that's um, that obviously uh, requires some some link to be uh, to be uh, so everything else everywhere else the plaquette is plus as a plus sign and so um, that means that uh, some of the links have to be minus one. So for example, in this bracket, it depends on the choice of gauge, of course, but in this bracket, if I draw the links that are minus one red and other things is, is, um, 
is um, is uh, black, then at least one link here has to be red. One link here, for example, this one in the one choice of my, my choice of this, this one has to be red. Okay. I you yeah. have. A Yeah. Um, what did you say, Tom? Oh, yeah. You you have five minutes left. If you could. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm finishing this. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, if you choose, you can convince yourself that your your gauge, uh, the 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 um, uh, because other brackets has to be plus, and you have um, some of the other. Links have to be also minus one. For example, you can draw a configuration like this, and this is minus one. All this is minus one, and uh, the other, the black, would be plus one. And now that partition function, this 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 configuration of u, when you say this is a u, and try to develop, you now develop. Uh, low temperature expansion. Low temperature expansion again means that you say e to minus e to k uh, sum over s i s j. Find that the presence of these links. Uh, give rise to the low temperature expansion uh, sort of a domain wall that is not uh, closed. Basically, that domain wall is the line that goes through the midpoint of all these links, which has uh, which has um, uh, which has uh, which has um, which has um, minus one value. So what we found is the following. So let me just uh, give you uh, give the uh, answer, which is not uh, difficult to uh, reproduce. Once you know the the idea, the partition function, the, uh, the, the 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 high temperature expansion for the correlation function of two spin is equal. To the partition function of the logarithm of the partition function in the presence of in the in the presence of two plaquettes with negative uh, uh, one values. Basically, here we can say this is the correlation function of spins. Is equal to what you would have in uh, this high, in this low temperature expansion, in the presence of two uh, instant zones. The spins on the on one side of the duality map to an instant zone in the other side of the duality. Why we say the instant zone? That's because it is a configuration, two dimensional uh, in. Imagine that to be a Euclidean uh, field theory uh, with the um, the instanton correspond to the localized uh, uh, a configuration with the localized um, uh, non-zero uh, non-zero f mu nu localized in one place. Okay, so here, it's, so maybe I uh, let me stop here. Next time we uh, I will start. Uh, we will start discussing the quantum Ising model and the um, uh, duality uh, in uh, three plus one or um, three D X Y model. Okay, um, uh, that will probably take. Uh, part of the, at least part of the next lecture. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, are there some quick questions?
Yes, it seems like they are forced to introduce gauge fields in order to like describe local operators on one side of the duality. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somehow, yeah, the spin operator on one side corresponds to the the instanton on the other side. Mm -hmm. But like, we can show the equality of partition functions without these. So, like, I would hope that the derivatives of the partition function should also be like you could introduce like like in, in a field theory you can like bring down correlation functions by like introducing some currents and you know taking derivatives of the partition function so uh, it seems like for equality of partition function we didn't need to introduce any gauge fields but then to so like it, it seems somewhat confusing uh, Maybe I'm being naive, but I guess I don't have a concrete question, but I'm just, you know, uh, uh. Yeah, you're asking the following question. If you uh, think about this as the second derivative. Right of the partition function of the Ising model, where the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian of this model is a uh, sum over a pair of J, but then there's a pair of S, and then there is also- um, yeah, Some source term for source the- Source term. Yeah. The source term yeah. uh, basically is a magnetic field that acts on the spin. The, uh, right, yes, same. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I send mm -hmm. the magnetic field to zero. And you send magnetic field to zero. Is there- a, Yes, is there a, a similar um, a similar um, things in the uh, in the other side? Um, right, but I guess we didn't really show the duality in the presence of the magnetic field. So uh, yeah, I didn't. But um, the question, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting question whether it can be extended. Uh, and here I, I I'm not sure if it will be uh, it will be a nice um, a nice something nice because a lot of things that uh, that makes this duality nice is the properties that this s is either plus or minus one then when it's squared it becomes one for example when I write down the high high temperature partition function for this s I think they, I draw a line in the this one s at a time s of a expectation value b1 and a lot of this will be lost when i have a continuous variable like j in here so i'm not completely right. i'm not sure if, if if the duality will be something nice on the other side yeah okay thanks yeah more quick questions Um, okay, if not, uh, then let's thank them again. And uh, we can stop the recording. And I don't know, sometimes there are.